Hi, welcome to the Electrogravity video series. Electrogravity is the third paper in ethereal mechanics. Electrogravity demonstrates the unification of electromagnetism and gravity through a new medium. It demonstrates what gravitational fields are, how they are generated by matter, and how they couple to matter. And in this release, we're going to show a pre precursory field model that is the origin of all field phenomenon and matter. Now, the purpose is, is to develop fast and light starships to bring humans to other worlds. Because our Earth right now is overburdened. I know there's people out there that say, oh, we'll just develop new technology so we can continue to live here and it won't be a problem. But there's an upper limit on how much sunlight falls on any square area of the Earth. And the other issue is all of our eggs are in one basket. One super volcano, one war one nuclear war, one, we're only one away from total extinction. All of our eggs are in the same basket. So begging the pardon of Mr. Elon Musk, I don't know if this is actually a SpaceX launch, but when I got the video, it said it was a SpaceX launch. I don't think it is. But anyway, the job will not be obtainable with 600-year-old Chinese fireworks technology. There's just not enough fuel in the Earth to lift enough people and material into space to accomplish this task. Now, luckily, ethereal mechanics says that every cubic meter of empty space contains trillions of dollars worth of energy in the form of ether. The objective is to figure out how to tap into the fuel and how to manipulate the ether for starship propulsion. Now, I know that when, you know, you bring up the thing about the ether, the physicists want to automatically do an ethericism on you and pull out their cross of relativity and quantum mechanics and say, thou shalt believe in the fabric of space-time and feel the burn of holy dark matter. Uh, well, at least when they can find it. And that right there is a hypocrisy because all sciences use a medium. Relativity has a fabric of space-time and dark matter. And if you want to say, well, that's just an abstraction. Okay, well then, how can you bend something that isn't there? I'm sorry. Even if you have an abstraction, you're saying that you even need something to fill the emptiness of free space in order to get your equations to work. And then quantum mechanics has its quantum foam and zero-point energy. The clown logic amazement. And electromagnetism. Well, electromagnetism, according to Maxwell's equation, does not need a medium. But... I'm going to let you in on a little secret that physicists and engineers are not aware of, except for the few that have seen my earlier videos. But before I sh tell you the secret, let me tell you who I am first, so you know this is coming from a position of knowledge. My name is Robert Distinti. I'm an electrical engineer with over 30 years' experience. In 1997, I discovered a new model of induction because induction didn't seem to work right. There seemed to be too many contradictions and you really couldn't apply an inductance to self-inductance because you'd get it in singularity. So I came up with a new model of induction. Now when I went to a physicist, that's what these stars here to remind me of stuff, when I went to a physicist to show him my new model of induction without even looking at my work, he said, you know you'll never work in this field again. And that's what I realized. We don't have science, we have religion in this country. And I realized I changed my my job from being an electrical engineer to being a software engineer in the, in the 90s that was easy to do so because no one's going to fire a software engineer from showing that Maxwell's equations are garbage okay and you can see the whole discovery how it was done in the foundation series playlist I got to put links to that later in 2007 I went for my master's degree in electrical and computer engineering from Fairfield University I specialized in electromagnetic physics and I used new induction for my graduate thesis. These are some of the pictures from the 3D modeling of new induction. Now here's where I finally got the confidence that I was right. Because I was able to show with new induction that I can get better agreement with observation using new induction than they could ever get with Maxwell's equation. And I could do it for a inductor sandwich between one and two ground planes. And they can't do that with Maxwell's equation. Or at least they haven't figured out how to do it with Maxwell's equations. When it finally came time to present the graduate thesis at the end in 2007, the dean of the School of Engineering was a physicist and he had a conniption. And that's where he told me Maxwell's equations are irrefutable. Okay, and I, I had to be quiet and be diplomatic. Anyway, the, the chair of electrical engineering and the chair of the computer science loved the work and they, they stood by me and got me through to the 
graduation because the dean had the authority to basically bar me from graduation. Okay, so for you physicists out there, I've had bad run-ins with physicists. So I kind of, you know, treat physicists poorly in return. Probably a bad idea, but I know there's good physicists out there. I just haven't really met any yet. Well, no, that's not true. Those people that went to get their degree in physics, but then went into a different field, I have no problem. I have a great people I know that have done that. Uh, but the people that are actually practicing physics, I don't have good results. Uh, just so you know, my logo here is a painting that my grandparents gave me this picture somewhere in the 90s. And this has become my logo, my effigy of Mother Nature. So now the question is, well, what is that secret that I was going to reveal to you that physicists don't know? This is the way you'll see on when you go to Veritasium. This is how Derek will show light propagation. If you go to Ken Wheeler's site, he uses this same thing. Everybody that claims that they understand light or they know light always show this model. This is Maxwell's plane wave equation in simulated form. The blue field is the E field. The green field is the B field or the magnetic field. Okay, this little red line here, this is a little indicator okay that uh, shows you at this point where the wave is passing the length is the magnitude and the direction is basically the peak of where the energy in the wave is now the electric field stores potential energy and the magnetic field stores kinetic energy that's not me that's actually in maxwell's own words in his books that somehow got missed in today's world but that's okay because all wave phenomenon have a potential energy component and a kinetic energy component. So what this shows you is that the magnitude of the energy in the wave goes to zero right here. Okay, and that's being shown over here. At the point in between the lobes, right here, where the lobes go to zero, the energy in the wave goes to zero. And then as it propagates further, when you get to the peak of a lobe like right there now this is showing direction this is just raw magnitude okay so now you have the peak of the energy in the wave right here so basically what you have here are photons that blink yes photons that blink i'm pretty sure this violates conservation of energy but why hasn't physicists looked at that i don't know I could get into a whole story about a thing I call the 27th rule of acquisition, the smarter monkey fallacy, but there's a lot more stuff added to this video. i got to make this video short. Anyhow, let me show you what the rest of the world uses. Nobody uses this. Nobody. Nobody uses this. Let me show you what real people that do real work in, phys in, in engineering use. They use what's called Euler's equation, also known as e to the j omega. Now you notice the spin, the spin that the quantum mechanics talk about that their photon should have spin. Now we see spin. And guess what? The magnitude of the energy in the wave is constant. It just changes direction in this little model here. But essentially the energy is constant over propagation. This doesn't violate conservation of energy. And our photons don't have to blink. And now our photons can have spin if you believe in photons. Okay. And so this is what everybody uses. This is what they use in radar and cell phone technology. They use this for everything. This is e to the j omega. And this switch happened about 100 years ago. Somewhere about 100 years ago, engineers went from using this to using this. Now, what's so special about e to the j omega? Well, let me show you. e to the j omega is a solution to the Helmholtz wave equation. The Helmholtz wave equation is a wave equation for waves that travel on a medium. E to the j omega is a solution to that wave equation. And it mimics very accurately waves that travel in water, on strings, in the air, on tambourines, on anything where you have wide vibration and waves. This model works and this model allows you to use very complex mathematical tools like Fourier series, Fourier analysis, Laplace transforms, all kinds of really neat cool stuff that engineers have developed to model nature and to predict how things are going to come out. And over a hundred years ago engineers started using this for radio 
and they use it today for cell phones and every other kind of electrical engineering you find this equation all over the place so this is a solution to a wave equation that for waves that travel on a medium and we're using it for light so what does that say if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck it must be a duck if we're using modeling equations from waves that travel on a medium then light waves must have a medium okay and if you don't believe me go into the radar handbook in the radar handbook you will not find maxwell's equation or a reference to maxwell's equation instead when they come down to array theory with his chapter seven i'm sorry i cut off the the thing over there uh you'll find e to the j omega right there not maxwell's equations e to the j omega now I, this is the whole thing represents omega right here okay and of course there's a little magnitude thingy out here but there's that's the point here is that this is what electrical engineers use in radar they don't use Maxwell's equation and like I said it's not found in the radar handbook well here's where we get the yeah buts someone will ask well wasn't the luminiferous ether disproven over a hundred years ago and the answer is yes and no Okay, now let me back up and explain this term luminiferous ether to people that may not know the history. See, in the before time, physicists realized that light waves behave just the same way as water waves and sound waves. And if water waves and sound waves are carried on a medium, water waves are carried on water, sound waves are carried on sound. So what are light waves carried on? Well, the first thing they did is they had to rule out that light waves might travel on the air. So they took this contraption you see in the background, which is a bell jar and an air pump. And they pumped the air out of this bell jar and light still passed through it. So then they realized there must be this material that fills empty space that's finer than matter, that can pass through matter. And they called this material that light propagates on the luminiferous ether. Okay, and so then they set out to find the ether. And they tried, and, but the, here's where the problem is. The problem wasn't that the ether exists or doesn't exist. The problem was with their model, their understand, their belief on what the ether should be. And their initial belief is the ether had to be static. In other words, it didn't move. The earth has to pass through the ether is what they believed because obviously it passes through the bell jar. And therefore, if nothing disturbs the ether, the ether must be stationary. Okay, so they went out and they could not make it work they could not detect the ether no matter what they did and then they started saying well maybe uh, as medium as mass goes through the ether it slightly drags the ether with it and there's where they went from a static or stationary model to the first concept of it being a dynamic model that's what ethereal mechanics has as a dynamic model okay but the problem, they, what stopped them from going down that rabbit hole and finally getting to the end where they should have gotten to is a guy by the name of Albert Einstein published in 1905 Special Relativity. And what he basically said was it does not matter. Okay, all you need to know is the property of the observer and the thing the observer is observing. And all you need to know is those properties and everything that goes on in between with the luminiferous ether does not matter matter and then people gave up the search and they falsely came to the conclusion based on rel special relativity is that well they'd never be able to measure the ether anyway so why bother looking for it now over the years unfortunately just like the telephone game you know that game where you tell something at somebody at the beginning and they whisper to the guy next to them and next to him and next to him and when you get to the end you get a total distortion of what was originally said well that's what's ha been happening in science over the years one generation teaches the next, teaches the next, teaches the next. And over this education telephone game, it has come down to people graduating now that the ether was disproven outright, and that is not the case. What was disproven is the static ether model. But what adds insult to injury on this whole thing is that in 1916, after he just got through telling us the ether didn't matter, he introduces general relativity with a fabric of space-time. So he's giving us a new ether, a new, new medium that fills free space. So I guess we really do need a medium after all. Now the difference is in ethereal mechanics, the ether model that we are going to just 
to show you is not just a medium for the propagation of light, it's also the medium for gravity. In fact, it's the medium for all fields. So in theorem mechanics, we're going to introduce a dynamic model of the ether. This first original version came out in 1999 and had a lot of recent improvements. And it unifies all the forces of nature and explains all the stuff at the right over here. I'm not going to get into it right now, but we will get to all these topics in a later video series. So where is science right now? Well, we've had an impasse that's been going on for over 100 years. Here's Maxwell equations, which came out in about 1880, something about that time frame. And then uh, general relativity came out in 1916 and quantum mechanics somewhere in the 1920s it began. And the, what the impasse is, these all pretty much don't talk to each other. Quantum mechanics proposes a model, but for the life of them, they can't figure out how matter creates gravity. In none of their equations does gravity come out. And I love the quantum mechanics shows. They, in the beginning, they get all these professors saying, wherever we apply quantum mechanics, it gets the right answer. It doesn't fail any time we apply it. But then they can't explain gravity. And then when at the end of the show, they often say, well, it doesn't explain anything in the real world either. So they kind of contradict themselves. The shows are just, I am sorry, these quantum mechanics shows are just deranged clown world stuff. I just, they're, they're, they're more comedy than they are reality. So anyway, they have a model of matter. And this model doesn't seem to generate gravity and it doesn't they don't know how it reacts to gravity and then you get general relativity which has a model of gravity but they don't have a model of matter okay matter to them is just a constant they have to put into a, an equation it's they don't have a model of matter it's just this this intrinsic thing this 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 blob of unknown stuff that does something to free space but they don't know how Okay, so what they have there is they have a, a field, a model of the field of gravity, but no model of matter. So if you, matter is that thing that generates gravity and reacts to gravity, then without knowing how matter creates a gravitational field or couples to it, you really aren't doing science here. Let me show you that in a different way. Okay, this is Newton's model of gravity, which came out more than 250 years ago. And here you'll see this big old honking constant of relation G. Okay, what G does, it's a constant of relation. It relates the right side of the expression to the left side. But they don't know how that happens. So they put, see, here's the Cavendish experiment where they got two big masses on a torsion balance. And they're able to measure the very finite me uh, effect of gravity between them. And they measure the force. And they don't know how it works. All they know that it does work. And they're able to quantify it with this relationship. And they came up with the constant G. So essentially, they don't know how gravity works here. But they have, what they have is a mathematical model that accurately mimics what they observe. That's all this is, is an empirical model. That's what engineers would call this. It's not a model that reflects an actual mechanism of the universe. It's just an empirical model based on observations and curve-fitting mathematics to fit the observations. Because whenever you have a big old honk and constant of relation that you don't know where it comes from, you don't know what causes it to be true, you just know you need that in order to make the equation work, then you're not doing science. You're pretty much doing engineering. Okay, so, and, and this constant relation is about 225 years old. Because that's the year that this Cavendish experiment was run. So fast forward to 20th century and you have general relativity. You're like, oh, we know what we're doing now with gravity. Gravity is a lot more complex than Newton's law over here. But guess what? They got the big old stinking honking constant of relation in here, which says to me they still don't know what they're doing with gravity and that all this is just a lipstick on a 250-year-old pig. Okay, what's ethereal mechanics going to do? We're going to show you how to derive G from the ethereal mechanics model of matter. Yes, we will show you how the gravitational field is generated and how matter couples to the field. And you don't need, and all you need is a simple ether model. Gravitational constant G is completely electromagnetic in origin. The only, and all these constants here are well known. This is the unit charge of an electron, the magnetic field constant. The only constant here that's not well known is RP, which is the radius of a preton, which is right over here. I still haven't updated these for significant digits. I'm sorry, we'll get to that later. But if you put all these constants in there, you're going to get the right value for G. Nobody else has been able to do this before. So if you see this come out in any other website, what they're doing is plagiarizing me. 
which happens a lot. So let's now go into a prior art review. There is a trailer video T13. I'm gonna. Uh, this is the link to it. I'm gonna put a, uh, put the links up there. I'm not gonna go much into it, but in this video is a long video. We go into review of Ken Wheeler, Dollard, Tesla, um, other Ether models, and quantum mechanics, relativity, how they relate to each other, and how ethereal mechanics is different from all of them. So let me show you the ethereal mechanics big picture. Okay, it took me 20 years, 20 years to get down the rabbit hole to this layer called pretonics. Right now, pretonics is more abstraction than reality. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I had to completely re revamp, refix, replace everything in electromagnetism. But once I started fixing electromagnetism 20 years ago, I started noticing that electromagnetism was telling me that that that, that there is gravity. There, the electromagnetism and gravity were highly correlated. And this led to a model of matter. And then from there, I could go all the way up and, and fix a lot of things in cosmology. But it took me 20 years. And basically, I was fixing stuff and then going around saying, oh, we still can't fix this. So I was going back and forth, just like a painter with a paintbrush has to go back and forth to fill in all the missing holes. And it took me 20 years to finally get everything down to the farthest level down the rabbit hole, which I call right now is pretonics. And below this level is the holy grail that we're looking for. This is ethonics. This is what the ether is, how to manipulate the ether, and how most of the fields are actually set up is in here. These little black spots mean I have missing pieces here. I have some pieces, not all the pieces. I have enough pieces to develop this abstraction layer here that we can use to go forward to show you that I can get all the right answers going above. And then what we're going to do after all these video series are produced, okay, electrogravity is going to hopefully be out by the middle of 2022. New electromagnetism will be fully released by the end of 2022. And cosmology has a whole crap load of stuff and lots of experiments and demonstrations to show you. And that'll probably take all of 2023. In the meantime, while I'm developing these video series, releasing all of this, I'm hopefully be filling in a lot more of the spots here. Because in here, this is the holy grail because this is going to show us how to manipulate the ether for starship propulsion and how we can tap into the ether for fuel. Don't know those yet. Right now, I just down to this abstraction layer. So that's essentially the big picture. And like I said, going forward, we're going to have to do multiple strokes going up and down, up and down in order to fill in all the holes in pretonics. It's not going to happen in one shot. It never did. It took me 20 years of going back and forth just to get where I am now. I don't expect that to change soon. But what I'm looking at is to be able to be done with pretonics in probably, hopefully, the next five years. Uh, not pretonics, ethonics in the next five years. So this is the video series outline for electrogravity. In this video series, which is the third paper of ethereal mechanics, which is electrogravity, Okay, we're going to start from the pretonics abstraction layer, the foundation layer, work up the model of matter, uh, electricity, gravity, magnetism, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so in the first video, that's this video, this is the introduction video. Next video, we're going to introduce some more foundational items that you need to go forward. And then in video number two is going to be the release of pretonics and the one underlying field that is the foundation for all other fields. And then in third video is going to be releasing the model of matter. Now this may be done in two, two videos because it, it may be too big for one video. And we're going to show the synthesis of all fields, gravity, electricity, magnetic synthesis of properties of matter, and the system, synthesis of the fundamental constants related to all the items above here. And we're going to, so in the end, we're going to show you that there is no need for any arbitrary constants of relation. No need for any arbitrary constants of relation. If you have an arbitrary constant of relation, you are not doing physics. You are doing engineering. So here's the prerequisites. Okay, the, the paper one is transvariance. Uh, this is a high fidelity simulation of Michael Morley's, Michelson Morley experiment, and it covers effects missed by Uncle Albert. The second paper is constructs. It goes into natural units. The 15th rule of acquisition was a correlation obscuration trap. And then VA is vortex algebra. It's a vector algebra with a complete multiply and divide. 
I got blocked a number of years ago because I could not do things with vector algebra that I needed to do. And I realized it's because there was no divide. And I realized when I started getting into it, the reason why there's no divide is because multiply is not sufficient. Okay, then there's the rules of acquisition. Now let me show you how to get to these items. Okay, this is the the home page for Ethereal Mechanics, which is distinti.com. And over here is the video series 500 C or Die, which basically shows we need to break the light barrier by at least a factor of 500 or we're going to go extinct. So you can go watch it. This links to a YouTube video. Uh, there's a lot of other things on this page, but we're going to talk about them uh, differently because they're also linkable from this page. This is the main Ethereal Mechanics page. The link here or the link here will get you into the Ethereal Mechanics page. Okay, and there's a little history here. Over here, this little thing here, this is new, newgravity.pdf. This is the original New Gravity from 1999. It was updated, I think, in 2004 and to use the, the version 3 of the new electromagnetism models. When you look at this, okay, understand we use old language. We use the language uh, massless particle, which is used in the older papers. And massless particle is what physicists would say, but that's an oxymoron. Because mass is a measure of quantity. So if you're massless, you're quantityless, and you don't exist. So a massless charged particle is an oxymoron. So the more appropriate term is an inertialess charged particle. That's what we use now. And we call those inertialess charged particles, we call them pretons. Okay, so here is EM001 transvariance. Okay, uh, I'm thinking these links don't work, so try the link at the bottom of this, this little cell here. That'll get you the transvariance PDF. This is the constructs PDF. Now, there is EM03, the static gravity model, and um, uh, this is where electrogravity is going to be. The reason why this, this was a false start in the paper. As I got into this, to write this electrogravity, what problem was I found out I still didn't have all the things with electromagnetism. So this was abandoned until I got all the final electromagnetism done. Okay, so uh, EM03 is going to be updated with the electrogravity paper that we're talking about now. I just haven't updated this, uh, this website yet. Okay, and so don't all these other guys all the way down. EM4 is correct. That will be new electromagnetism V5. EM05 will be the cosmology paper. I got to update this. And these are um, TBD, TB Derm. But now down here, you can find all the support links. Here's where you get to the paper for Vortex Algebra. Now, sometimes these links on the top don't get you there. Sometimes they just bring you to the top of this page. If that happens, use the bottom link. Here's the scientific rules of acquisition. Uh, review of competing theories. Now, for this guy here, okay, let's go into the link. You'll notice that I just have two playlists. This is the third rule of acquisition. This is a YouTube playlist. This is the fourth rule, fourth generation of the rules of acquisition. Not complete yet. I'm completing the fourth, the fourth generation of the rules of acquisition this year, and I will populate this entire page with all the 33 rules of acquisition with their videos, so you can watch them without having to go through an, uh, a YouTube playlist to get at them. So just so you know, this is still, site is still under construction. It'll probably be under construction till the day I die. So there's just too much for one person. I'd love to do this full time. So if you want to support this work, you can go to the Patreon site. Uh, I want to thank my Patreon folks. They've helped me expand operation with new equipment facility. But my day job is still my number one patron. Okay. And, and because I have to spend time on my day job, I can't put full time into ethereal mechanics. So and that's why it's going to take probably up to five years to get to all of Ethonics. So if you can help, I'd appreciate it. Um, Distinti.com, that's the website I just showed you. Ethereal Mechanics is the Patreon site for as little as $5 a month. You can become a passenger and you can see the insider videos of things, things going on. And you can help this project forward. Again, the ultimate goal here is if we can make money, we're going to try to make money. But the ultimate goal is to get technology going to save the planet. That's the number one priority. 
Okay, and uh, I don't think this link works. I got to go find out what's going on, but you can get to the Patreon site by going Patreon Ethereal Mechanics this way. And then there's ethereummechanics.info. This is a blog site run by um, one of my supporters and patrons. And there's been there's people that have been with me for over 20 years. And I really appreciate that support. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope the video quality is getting better so that I can keep people engaged and help them understand what's going on, why we're doing this. And the future looks bright. It looks like all of the little black holes are going to be filled in and we're going to have things going pretty quickly, pretty fast. But again, if you can help out so I don't have to do my day job, I can do this full time. That would be great. I mean, if you don't, that's fine too, because I'm going to do this one way or the other. It's just going to take longer the other way. Thank you.